Welcome to our lecture online. There is actually another method by which we can find the cosine of the sum and the cosine of the difference of two angles. And let me show you how that's done, but of course we have to presume that we already know what the sum and the difference of angles are for the sine function and that we understand this relationship between the sine and the cosine, that the sine is equal to the cosine of 90 degrees minus theta and that the cosine of theta equals the sine of 90 degrees minus theta. So once we know that, we can then make the following assumption. So what we're going to do is try to prove this. So let's start with the cosine of a plus b. Well, we can say that this must therefore be equal to the sine. So if a plus b is theta, then it gives us the sine of 90 degrees, which is pi over 2, minus a plus b. So here we simply use this, this relationship right here. So the cosine of an angle is equal to the sine of 90 degrees minus that angle. All right, so now we're going to regroup that a little bit. We're now going to write that this is equal to the sine of pi over 2 minus a. And let me use brackets here so that shows a little bit better. So this and then minus b, like this. All right. So now we know that we have a relationship for that. This is the sine of the difference of two angles. So we know that this therefore is equal to the sine of the first angle. So the sine of pi over 2 minus a times the cosine of the second angle right here. So the cosine of b minus, because I'm subtracting the angle, so I have minus the cosine of the first angle, which is pi over 2 minus a times the sine of b. All right, so now we have the sine of pi over 2 minus a. Now that is 90 degrees minus theta, the sine of 90 minus theta is the same as the cosine of theta, so this cannot be replaced by the cosine of the angle, so that would be a, the cosine of a, times the cosine of b, and that would be minus the cosine of pi over 2 o minus a, that would be the cosine of 90 degrees minus theta is equal to the sine of theta. So that's minus the sine of a times the sine of b. And that would be the cosine of the sum of the two angles, a plus b. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So you can see that once we have the one relationship, it's quite easy to find the other relationship using that particular method. Of course, we can then also say that the cosine of a minus b is equal to the sine of pi over 2 minus a minus b, like this, which is equal to the sine of, and I guess I should use brackets here, so it would be, I'm going to group these two together, pi over 2 minus a, and then minus times a minus would be plus b, like that. So now we have the sine of the sum of two angles, which is defined right here. And so that would be equal to uh, the sine of the first angle. So here, this, the sine of the sum of the angles, sine of the first angle. So we have the sine of pi over 2 minus a times the cosine of the second angle, cosine of b. And then we have plus the cosine of a cosine of pi over 2 minus a times the sine of b. And now we use a relationship again. We have the sine of pi over 2 minus a. Pi over 2 minus a, that gives us the cosine of the angle. So this is equal to the cosine of a times the cosine of b. And then we have plus the cosine of pi over 2 minus a the cosine of pi over 2 minus a, the cosine of pi over 2 minus a, that gives the sine of a, so it would be equal to the sine of a times the sine of b. And notice that this is equal to the cosine of a minus b, and again, exactly what we were looking for. So that's actually quite easy. So once you know what the sum and the difference are for the sine function, you can very easily find it for the cosine function simply by relating them like this. And that is how it's done.